And ladies and gentlemen, the three-year-old Colt and Gelling Pacers are being led onto the track for the 11th race. This is the third and final division of the $225,000 Jug Preview. First half of the late double with exactors and tries. Coming into this race, off a victory in 153 and 2 with earnings surpassing the $700,000 mark. And a mark of 151 at Balmoral Park. Number one is Three Olives, owned by LNL Divisor Limited of Holland, Michigan, trained by Joe Holloway. David Miller looking for three straight wins in the Jug Preview. With a mark of 151 and 2 at the Meadowlands and a two time winner on the season, Randy Tharps drives the two bidding for time for Brett Pelling, looking for three straight wins in the Jug Preview, and owners Perfect World Enterprises of Old Westbury, New York. A four time winner on the year, Ron Pierce is in behind the three Arts Advantage who recently went over $60,000 in earnings. He took his mark at the Meadowlands this season, 151 and one. Also trained by Brett Pelling, he's owned by the Brittany Farms of Versailles, Kentucky, and the Val d'Or Farms. Locally owned by Richard Brooks, of Brookville, Ohio, and conditioned by Jeff Cox. Number four is New York Mats. Taking his mark, two starts back at Freehold Raceway. New York Mats from post four, Dave Hawk is in the bike. Number five, the richest horse on the program tonight with over $1.1 million in earnings and a mark of 149 at the Meadowlands. This is McCardle owned by Smiley, the TLP stables, Smiley and Sampson Street stables, trained by Chris Ryder and driven by Walter Case Jr. A six-time winner at two with over $125,000 in the bank lifetime. Number six is Hogan Highlight, owned by the partnership of Brown, Rittenauer, Henkel and the Highlight stable, trained by Brian Brown, in the bike, Brett Miller. With a mark of 154 and two, right here at Scioto Downs. A six time winner at two. This is Armbro Watchman racing for the final answer stable trainer, Mike Campbell, Chip Noble at the lines. And unraced at two, but making up for it at three is Cheyenne Ray, sporting a very consistent 5 9 and 4 record in 22 starts in the season and a mark of 152 and 3 at the meadow at the meadows is under lease to the Cheyenne gang of Port Washington New York trained by Robert Siegelman and driven by Brian Sears that's your field for tonight's 11th race in the third division of the jug preview they are off McCardle leaves well and now goes out to take the lead from Three Alums, who comes away a prominent second. A gap of two bidding for time is third, followed by Arts Advantage in fourth by two and a half. New York Mats is racing in fifth. He's eight lengths off the lead, and Hogan Highlight tucks in just behind him. Then we got Armbro Watchman, and Cheyenne Ray is the early trailer as they round the turn into the home stretch for the first time with McCardle leading it. It's McCardle by a length and a quarter, followed by Three Olives bidding for time and Arts Advantage 26 and 3 for the first quarter as they race single file in front of the grandstand. It's McCardle making the pace. McCardle by a length and a quarter. Three Olives tracks in from the pocket spot second, bidding for time in line from third, and Arts advantage edges to the outside providing cover to Hogan Highlight followed by New York Mats then we got Armbro Watchman and Cheyenne Ray is at the tail end of the field as they round the clubhouse turn they're bound for the half mile pole with McCardle leading the way McCardle reaches the half in 56 and 3 he gets away cheap on the second quarter just 30 seconds for McCardle as they round the turn into the back stretch Arts Advantage just off his flank is racing parked out in second. Three Olives with a ground saving trip in third and Hogan Highlight is brought into contention. He's two off the pace second over in fourth.
bidding for time. Hugs the pylons in fifth, followed by New York Mats in sixth. Cheyenne Ray starts to pick it up from the back of the pack, quickly catching cover. Now within range, only four off the lead. Armbro Watchman trails the double deckered field in one, 25 flat. Moving around the far turn, McCardle continues to be pressed by Art's advantage on the outside. Hogan highlights, swings out three wide for the drive, and three olives is poised to strike from the pocket spot as they try to come after McCardle in the final eighth mile. McCardle by a length and a half, three olives down the inside. Art's advantage is fading, but McCardle, with much in reserve, is drawing away to win the third division of the Jug Preview by a length and a half. Finishing second, it was three olives over, bidding for time, 152 and two. Heading into the winner's circle, it's McCardle capturing the third division of the Jug Preview. A three-year-old son of Falcon Sealster, out of the Nihilator Mayor lilting laughter, is owned by the partnership of Smiley, the TLP stable, Smiley and Sampson Street stable of Florida, New Jersey, Quebec and Pennsylvania, trained by Chris Ryder. That's four wins on tonight's card for Walter Case Jr. and nine for McCardle who closes in on $1.2 million in career earnings, capturing the third division of the Jug Preview in 152 and 2. In the winner's circle, helping to make the presentation of the winning connections once again, Vice President of Scioto Downs, Mrs. Laverne Hill, General Manager of Scioto Downs, Ed Ryan, and the Director of Racing here at Scioto Downs, Jim Ewart. Once again, here's John Pavlik with Walter Case Jr. Fourth win tonight for Walter Case Jr. Congratulations, Casey. Tell us a little bit about this mile. You got that big breather, and that had to help. Well, this horse can he's real handy. He can leave the gate 100 mile an hour, and uh, I really wanted to get around the one and then control, control the situation, get it back down. Uh, I had a lot of respect for the one horse. Uh, he qualified in 53 at Friel. That's a big mile there. And Joe Holloway, he's a good horseman, and uh, so I have a lot of respect for him. That's why I backed down the middle half, and I kind of made it into a sprint. It simply boils down to the fact that you had two horses make big runs at you. They simply never were able to be in a position as you were to control the fractions. Right. Uh, the horse came first up, didn't have enough horse to really push me hard, and uh, I used him to keep the one horse locked in behind me and top of the stretch. Uh, it was just a sprint, and my horse uh, won the sprint. You know, you're right about this Chris Ryder. This has sort of been a stealth horse. This is a horse that won fantastic money at age two, has picked his spots marvelously this year, but there's just other horses that have written some headlines ahead of this one. This is a great three-year-old. Yeah, this horse is kind of uh, the unheard of horse, and he's made like uh, over a million dollars, and he's a great horse, but uh, he doesn't get the headlines like Mach 3 and Red River Hanover, and uh, this horse should get more credit than what he gets because he's a great horse. Okay, so you've seen a lot of good three-year-olds. Tell us, who's at the head of the three-year-old class at this point going into the Little Brown Jug? Well, uh, I guess uh, Mach 3 and Art Major. Who got beat tonight, by the way? Oh, he didn't. Art Major, I guess, is another good three-year-old. Uh, Brett Pelling's always got good three-year-olds. Uh, he's a tough man to beat. Uh, unfortunately, this horse isn't eligible for the jug. Uh, I wish he was, because uh, I like to get him out in there. Congratulations. Once again, a great night and a good night to have a great night on. Yeah, you've got to win a lot of 2,000 claimers in Maine to make this kind of money. <laughs> Congratulations. Walter Case, Jr., who had four wins here tonight. I want to tell you, we saw three outstanding individuals, and you're right. McCardle not eligible to the Little Brown Jug, and that is very much our loss because he is a great colt in a very deep, I believe, three-year-old class here this year. By the way, to all 9,300 of you who are here tonight, a bigger crowd than last year, I hope you'll agree with me. What a great night of harness racing. It has been my privilege to be down in the winter circle and talk to owners, trainers, and drivers on your behalf. Have a great evening. A still great Invitational pace coming up, so don't anyone move.